What is up folks? So today we're going to be doing a review of the Daiwa ProRex 400. Um, overall, this is a pretty good reel. Um, but when it comes to something like another top brand such as Shimano, um, when it comes to resiliency, I would say this is where this reel fails. And I'm going to get into that shortly, but first I want to say this does have a lot of cool features that the Shimano Tranks doesn't have and that, that's what I have right next to me. And you know, these Tranks from the 400 or 500, they're known for resiliency, smoothness, um, but the problem with the 400 is, you know, you only get 40, in, four, uh, 40 inches per crank and that's why I kind of went with the Pro Rex that it has 43 inches per crank. If you know anything about musky, um, you know speed is key. Um, when you're using bucktails, um, one of the most deadly lures to use on musky lunge, um, when you can get that bucktail to buzz across the weeds a lot faster, you, you can entice them more into biting. So speed is very important. That's why I bought this reel. But as I found out, um, there is one thing that happens when I cast. You know, I want to say, I don't know, every eighth or nine casts is sometimes the button engages on this reel. And what I've noticed when that happens is, I had one time where I was casting uh, somewhat of a heavy lure, I would say around three to four ounces. Um, the whole reel, after it, the button engaged, casting it midway, um, the reel locked up. Um, the handle and it's like I kind of had to really use a lot of strength to budget loose and in doing so it really I think grinded those brass gears inside and if you know anything about bait casters especially when it comes to throwing big rubber I wasn't throwing big rubber just a smaller lure again like around three to four ounces um, but if you know anything about brass gears they're just not known for lasting very long when you're throwing the heavier lures but here's the thing, if a button is engaging and you got brass gears, well guess what's going to happen? Those gears are going to wear down. And I know it's another thing, um, comparing this to the Shimano Tranks, um, you know, you can keep your thumb, you know, kind of, you know, when you cast, you keep it on the spool to prevent backlash, so you can keep back part of your thumb on the, uh, on the engaging button to prevent it from popping back up. But I noticed when I started doing that, I'd start reeling and then I'd hear like some of the gears grinding inside because with the Shimano, that button pops back up and you don't really gotta worry about it. But when I was keeping my button or my uh, thumb on the button to prevent you know that button from popping back up when casting, um, you know, I, I could feel the button would go all the way up and I'd feel like the gears, like you can kind of hear it right now, like grinding inside just a little bit. I wonder if that was causing some of those gears uh, to soften too, round out. But anyways, that's basically the major defect to the reel. Um, other than that, if they would just like fix that, prevent this button from engaging, it would be like a great reel to use. But because it engages, I think this is what's causing a lot of the problems for these reels to not last very long. Um, now I'll remind you, they do have the next model in the saltwater version called the Daiwa TW and it has stainless steel gears. So if you're in the market for a really resilient Daiwa and you really want, you know, the T-Wing, the 43-inch crank, make sure you buy that, that one. But here's the thing. I wanted a 400 reel and I wanted a 400 reel in left hand. I'm left handed. I'm kind of ambidextrous, so I kind of left and right. But I want a left hand. It's the most comfortable way to musky fish. They didn't have the TW in the 400 in the left hand, just the right hand. So I was just like, man, this sucks. So I went in with the Pro Rex. Um, <clears throat> and sadly, this reel didn't last very long. Now I have another one over here just to show you. I really like the reel. I bought another one. That's how much I uh, liked it. But this is the one that ended up breaking. I can show you a short clip here.
where I basically cast it out and just it just went to shit. It locked up and I think it just that's from that button engaging constantly every so often. Um, you know, I said it was like every nine to 10 casts, maybe it's more like, I don't know, like 20 to 30 casts, but it happens. And I noticed that when I was first starting out musky fishing, I'm um, using spinning reels. I went through some spinning reels that the bail would engage. Um, the pens that would do it. I think even that quantum Boca did it. But when I went to the Shimano Stratic, Again, Shimano. I swear to God, that C5000, that bail never engaged on me, even when I was flicking my wrist, you know, casting those lures hard, um, trying to get really long casts. I never had the problem of that bail engaging. And honestly, I never had the button engage on the Shimano Tranks 400 either. So it just like Shimano, they're known for quality. When it comes to the world of musky, um, it's basically the top brand to go with. And now that they come out with the Shimano Conquest MD and I have it actually sitting right here, I'm gonna get to it shortly. Um, this is mainly reviewing again of Dawa Pro Rex. I mean, just, they're out doing themselves even more in putting these other companies behind. But if Dawa can just work on stopping this button from engaging, maybe moving up to even stainless steel gears, I mean, just, I think they thought they could get away with brass gears um, and just save stainless for saltwater fish. Because, you know, some people say the saltwater fish are like, you know, musky. Uh, catching a tarpon is like a musky on steroids. But, you know, they don't realize sometimes, I guess you could say, how much strain these heavier lures put on these reels, man. And that lure I was casting was basically a topwater bait. Again, it was like only three to four ounces or something like that. And it's just like, it's, this shouldn't be happening, man. Um, it just sucks that it happened. I wanted to stick with this reel. I really like it, the fact that it, it's known for the speed. And another great feature, and I really like this, you know, I love when I can get a lure out super far, especially when I'm musky fishing from the shoreline, just getting those extra feet, maybe getting to the drop-off point, you know, where the musky might be hanging out at, even when you're out on the boat, you're casting further with the T-wing, this eye, this guide on this baitcaster reel, allows you to cast so much further. So you're gonna be covering so much more ground. And this is just like, I'm blown away with this feature. And when I looked up uh, Doug Wagner, one of the reviews he gave up, a lot of people get pissed about when you're um, fishing in the fall or even winter for musky, is the problem with the tranks is that eye on the, um, baitcaster it's just round it starts icing up so you don't get as long as cast the casts aren't smooth sometimes the line can just lock up he said this t-wing t-wing would prevent that from happening so it's super smooth you will get lures out further you wouldn't have to worry about your like line icing up it would still ice up a little bit but that line would still go there go through there super smooth um, if they can just again work on this reel and prevent that button from engaging I mean, this would be really an incredible reel to use. And you could still say maybe the TW is. Um, again, the nuts upgraded version. This comes at a 330. Um, the TW, I think, comes at like 360, 370. So I think it's worth paying the extra 40 bucks or so to get those stainless steel gears, um, I think. So, um, it, again, if you're going to go with Daiwa, make sure you do that. But, you know, I even heard on the musky forums, the musky outdoor forums, people still complaining about these Daiwas. Just not as resilient, don't last as long as the Shimano's, um, even those uh, Komodo's. I think they use stainless steel gears. There's other reels that last long in the Daiwas. Just Daiwas are known for, like, incredible features, but they just, they're still lacking in, like, the resiliency department, you know. And that's, it's important to have a resilient reel when you're out musky fishing. I mean, like, when this reel just, this one over here stopped working, it just made me so depressed. It, like, ruined my whole day because I had so much hype and hope into this reel that I'm like, I love it for buzzing bucktails. I haven't really got out much this year musky fishing. Um, but in, I was working night shift last year. I was like, I was going to finally use it 
um, put it to the test, but then this one broke. And I'm like, then I see the Conquest MD out, you know, the Sh Shimano Conquest MD come out. I'm like, yeah, I think this is going back, and I'm going back to Shimano. And in fact, I think I'm going all Shimano. I'm going to sell these. I think I'm even going to sell the, the Tranxes. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to do a review on the Tranx because everyone knows this is a pretty good solid reel. Uh, the problem is the 500 doesn't come again in left hand, so I can't get that, so I'm settling with this. But the problem with the Shimano uh, Tranx 400 is every so often you got to keep tightening, tightening this drag. So imagine coming across like just a 50, 55 inch musky and you try to set the hook <laughs> and you don't have that tight drag and you lose a musty because of that. Well, guess what? That's kind of a major, you wouldn't think that's big of a defect, but it is. I've read it on forums, people losing giant size musky because they don't get a good hook set because that drag loosens up every so often. It's still a friggin' solid reel, very resilient, um, super smooth, um, but you know, again, a defect. These reels, they're not all perfect, man. But here's the thing. The Chicago, now that the Shimano Conquest MD comes in 40 inches per crank, that could be a perfect reel similar to the Shimano Trinx 500, which I guess you could still say is top dog because it gets 43 inches per crank. But here's the thing. That Conquest, I can palm. I can fit around my hand and grip it real tight it doesn't fatigue me a lot of people complain that the 500 fatigues you um so i'll get into that shortly but again centering on the dyno pro rex i really still like this reel again if the company can fix the button engaging the knob um is actually kind of like a foam exterior on it it's very comfortable reel the one thing a lot of people like to say, other than the ting wing and 43 inches per crank, is that it's super smooth. Some people even say when you're pulling double tens, it's still pretty smooth, even though, you know, some people say you tend to want to use um, lower gears um, when you <coughs> reeling double tens, but it still does it pretty effortlessly. So um, I still, <coughs> if you want to try the Dawa Pro Rex, try it out. Um, originally, I was using my 400 Tranxes for the big rubber and used these for like bucktails, the Dower Pro Rexes for bucktails, lighter lures, top water baits, you know, the, the lures I can get a lot of speed with, even spinner baits. And what do you know, I would say I got a full half, like about a half season out of this reel. This one broke, this one's still working. But I'm like, that sucks, man. That shouldn't be happening. That reel should not be breaking that soon um, because of that stupid defect of that button engaging. Um, I know the company doesn't want to hear this, but as I always, about this channel, I'm pretty honest when it comes to reviews because the thing about some of these companies they hate hearing this feedback because it puts out a bad name about the company, but they got to hear this feedback so they can improve the reel. That was known, not known for resiliency. And it's just like a lot of people know it across the forums. They should know it too. But I guess it just, you know, they keep going cheap with the gears. And I don't know why the hell that button's engaging. But if they can just work on the engineering and fix that, it would be an all-around great solid reel. But I'm going to give this probably uh, three and a half out of five stars. I mean, it could be a lot better. Um, but it is what it is, man. A reel should last a lot longer, especially when you're, you know, again, I wasn't throwing really heavy lures, but these musky are big, man. Some of them fight really well, and the last thing you want the reel to do is fail. Um, when you're in the middle of catching, like, a 50-inch musky, and, you know, some people say eventually Lake St. Clair is going to have some 60-inchers, and I'm sure there's some in there right now, but... Um, but this is my new bad boy. I, I got three of these now. Um, I'm probably going to honestly sell my Tranxes too. Again, because that drag loosens up every so often. This reel, I mean, it's incredible. It's lightweight. It's small. You can palm it. It's super smooth. Um, a lot of people brag about how resilient these conquests are. Um, you can basically throw big rubber with this. You can throw... Um, 
you know, bucktails, especially now that it gets 40 inches per crank. I don't know if they're gonna, ever gonna be able to, I don't know the engineering, but go with a higher gear to finally get 43 inches per crank. But honestly, 40 inches I think are, is enough. Um, but I don't wanna do a, like a full review about this reel. This is mainly Pro Rex, but I just wanna let you guys know that I finally like, that Conquest MD came out. I mean, this is the whole package. So if you didn't have a lot of success with the Dial Pro Rex, um, you still don't like the trains because they, you know, that drag loosening up, I would say spend the extra money and get a Conquest MD now that this comes in 40 inches per crank. That reel is incredible, man. I was just out screwing around with it. Um, over near Pesh Island, buzzing a few spinner baits and bucktails. I could swear I saw uh, Tiger Mussy take a nip at it, um, take a swoop at it. A few other, I think another fish followed up, but I rewinded the, the video and it looked like there was some other species. Um, but I just can't wait to get out with that friggin' reel. And I don't know if I get, well, the guys let you know, okay? In the other room right now, I got Garmin Live Scope sitting in there with a 15 inch. LCD screen and get this not the 34 the 62 that you know you can get out I don't know was it was it like you know 200 more feet or so I think uh, a lot of people would think of the 62 is just made for depth no if you can get out further distance or range um, you're gonna pick up and muskie are easy to pick out because they're longer I figured let me get the 62 I just want to try so I got that and also um, a Hummingbird Mega 360, also with the 15 inch screen. So I'm thinking, these are major upgrades, man. Um, I'm thinking of using the Mega 360 at my console, looking at that. And then, you know, I also picked, um, was it the, um, the link up? I forgot what they called it. Um, with the Trova link, where I can link it up with my um, Solix 15. Um, fish finder where it's linked up I can control the trolling motor right from the display but some people are doing this they're using both the 360 and the live scope so when I get up to the front boat I'm gonna turn on of course the live scope and so probably I'm gonna try perspective mode a lot and so when I'm reeling up I'll know when a muskie's falling up hopefully I'll know when a muskie is there are in the area I'll be able to see the detail I still thought about using 360 you know hummingbird 360 at the council and at the front of the boat but then i'm like man everyone's been talking about that live scope i just talked to the one guy at michigan marine gear um that mounts the stuff he he knows one guy that has both both the 360 and the live scope and they just both do, do two different things they complement one another so i was like what the hell you got one life to live spoil yourself get out there i love musky fishing i'm sure this is not only going to help with musky fishing but bass fishing but get this as well too i just watched history channel how they're in mid lake michigan looking for structure and they're using like a 360 sonar so guess what else we do on this channel we're using underwater drones of treasure hunt so this is not only going to complement musky and bass fishing but my treasure hunting side of the channel too using underwater drones and again we got three different underwater drones the Five Fish V6 Expert that also has a metal detector option on it. Um, I also have the Gladius Chase, or I'm sorry, the Chasing M2, and also the Gladius Mini S that I eventually gonna get a um, claw on. But these are incredible upgrades um, to both fishing, my YouTube channel, treasure hunting. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm still kind of like. <clears throat> I've paid most of the stuff up, but I'm still working a lot of overtime. Um, hopefully, I can get through that and uh, get out more with this stuff. Um, but it just, this technology is getting incredible, man. I can't wait to see what comes out next. <clears throat> if this technology doesn't fucking kill us on the flip side, considering artificial intelligence, how many people say that we're on the verge of gaining singularity? I mean, this shit's no joke. Some of the technology I've seen lately, it's just, it's blowing my mind. But it's just like, you know, we'll see where we're ahead. You know, as Mitch Yukako said, we're jumping from type zero civilization to type one. This is, this technology is going to change, the, you know, the car industry going from, um, 
uh, you know, combustion engine, gas, to electric, and you know, if you know anything, you've been reading behind the scenes that they've already set up a hydrogen plant in Michigan. Toyota, known for some of the best engineering, um, the Japanese are known for, again, some of the best engineering when it comes to making musky rolls, well, reels. They're also known for some of the best engineering for making sports cars and other just standard cars that they're investing in hydrogen car technology. So it's going to change. That sport is, is changing fishing, musky fishing, bass fishing. This is going to change treasure hunting, underwater drones. I think you'll be able to use these underwater drones with this sonar. Um, I know that they're working on coming out better sonar for these underwater drones that are going to have sonar, but it's still very expensive. Um, both the, I think it's the Chasing M2 Pro and the Five Fish V6 Expert has sonar, but it's just out of my range. I'm not blowing all that money, but it's going to come down in price. But anyways, <coughs> you know, <coughs> Anyways, major upgrades to the channel. I hope you guys, and what I plan to probably do is, um, I've already been fussing around with, um, you know, I always talked about doing this. I showed a few clips in my bass fishing videos over at Kent Lake, but I've been mounting a camera here, getting this different perspective with the GoPro. want to do a perspective putting the GoPro right next to the Garmin live scope that way you're seeing my perspective and you're also seeing the perspective of the fish follow it up and hit it or just hanging out or whatever I've already seen clips on YouTube of guys just you know picking up musky just sitting there like bedded down in the weeds with the Garmin live scope and then cast near it and hooking them so I mean just being able to see that digitally on that like LCD screen is just, it's going to be amazing. Um, this technology, again, is going to change the sport. Some people are not for it, just like the electric muscle car. Um, some people aren't for this live scope because it's probably going to turn a fish of 10,000 casts into maybe like a fish of 100 casts. I don't know. They're still fucking hard as hell to hunt. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. They're still tough to fish for. So I think if this technology can give you the edge a little bit, I don't tournament fish, but I could still see the point of view where maybe some of this technology is making it too easier to hunt for these species of fish for, for tournaments, and they should start um, either putting rules on or ban it, but I'm still, I got mixed views on that, I don't know, because it's just, you know, we just don't know where it's headed. I mean, it just, you know, it amazes me. But um, anyways, on that note, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, tell me what experiences you've had with the Dial Pro Rex. I know guys still swear by them. I know guys that I run on the forums, even though they're not as resilient as the Tranks, they still like it because the comfort, the speed, the T-wing, the smoothness. And even though it breaks down, you can still send this out to get fixed. Simple. Or, like, I think I talked about, you know, writing about it. Just buy two or three different ones, that way you have a backup. But then, like I said, I thought about, well, if you have a 50-inch musky, uh, this fails, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot. And this gets back to even the tranks where you set the hook, the drag isn't tight, it just keeps loosening up. You know, you got to think about these things. You don't think, oh, it's, it's going to happen to me when I got a giant musky on. But, dude, some of these fish only happen once in a lifetime. You know, say you got like a 55 inch on, a 57 inch, maybe even bigger, and you lose it because of real failure or a defect or some other bullshit that you knew about and you could have fixed and went with a more upgraded, more dependable reel. So it's just like having all these features are not as important as you think if, if the reel is going to fail is what I'm getting at. So you really got to think about these things thoroughly. I know guys, especially some of the locals, 
that say, you know, you've heard all their locals, oh, you should, Pro Rex, Daiwa, it's cool, you should still try it out, but then you talk to some of the hardcore locals, and like, they're still saying, like, Shimano all the way. You know, either the 500, if you, you go in left hand, get the 400, and now that the Conquest MD's out, this bad boy, I'm sure they're going to say go with this as well, too. So, um, and this is like an incredible reel. I just can't wait to get back out. It, it is a, it is super, super expensive. $600 reel paired, paired up with a $200, $250 reel. But I've showed you guys, you don't always have to go with the top quality equipment. Some of these spinning reels, spinning reels just don't, they're more resilient than bay casters. Um, you can put a lot of strain on them. You can't cast big rubber with them because they slice your finger. I've talked about how you can put a little um, hockey tape on your finger to prevent that. You can get away with throwing like six to eight ounce swim bait, but it's not comfortable. But I've showed you, you can still use that Shimano Stratic C5000 level, a lot of lighter baits um smaller lures and still have a lot of fun musky fishing so i'm kind of showing you guys both you can do it with cheap gear you can go all the way uh, the most premium gear and i mean if you got the money i would definitely go with the premium gear but that's just because i'm getting into like more fall fishing using heavier lures such as the the, the pounder now they got like a fucking double pounder out or whatever that thing is called like the ultra dog that's even i think was it a triple pounder but anyways yeah it just there's just different levels in this musky fishing and just if you can afford it go with the conquest md but on that note hopefully dial works out the bugs of the button engaging and go from there but you can read around read some of their views it's a common problem with the pro rex anyways um I keep going on and on. I just love the sport of fishing. And if you notice anything, I think they were going with kind of like a monster quest scheme here. Like to catch anglers. You know, they get the eye, the mock, similar mock monster quests on History Channel. If you know anything about one of the more two popular episodes about the original monster quest, they did one on pike and they did one on muskie. So it was kind of ingenious to them, kind of do something similar. And they had a lot of slogans. You know, like, I can't remember them all, but, like, chase your monster, or find your monster or something, you know, meaning the muskie. And they had a good thing going, but it just, you know, they got to work on resiliency. That's where Daiwa fails. That's where Shimano succeeds. Most people know it. I um, think by now that the company would have capitalized on it and try to fix uh, some of their problems to make these reels a lot more resilient. But... It is what it is, man. I'm just giving an honest review of what I went through. I'm going to sell these on eBay, go from there, and probably use that money towards more musky gear or musky lures. So anyways, thank you guys for watching.